I don't think there's any problem with changing disciplines or having career breaks and certainly we would never hold that against anybody coming uh, to the panels. We are really open to people. Um, it's the candidate, the ideas, the research um, and the place that they are that will make a difference. So the panels try to take into account as much as possible um, the actual kind of full-time equivalent research opportunities that people have had. So there is uh, a level playing field, if you like. You know, if you've done five years of research and somebody's done one or none, but clearly the, the outputs of the person who, who hasn't had that research opportunity wouldn't be expected to be as high. I would certainly encourage everybody to apply and not be put off if they haven't done a, a traditional kind of um, career track to date. I had a long time away from science, um, doing a job in um, scientific publishing in my sort of mid-career. Um, I, I don't think it's been a disadvantage to me at all. I think it's it's quite the opposite in some ways um, because I've been able to approach the application and the project with um, maturity and clarity of thought I think that has been um, a positive advantage to me and I, I don't feel that I have been disadvantaged because I was different age to most of the applicants or because my experience was different. After my PhD I became a single parent uh, and it took uh, some time of work uh, uh, for that. And then I started working as a postdoc while having to take time out for childcare. Uh, several reviewers of my proposal had commented on the fact that um, this time out of work uh, should not be held against me. And uh, it clearly hasn't. So I'm very grateful for the MRC uh, to, to do it, to do that. Absolutely not. You can easily stay in the same institution, but that requires that that institution has the skills, and the environment that will help you to do the type of work that you've planned. So I think that's the key point. So you need to be in a centre that has some excellence, a track record in the area where you're wanting to conduct the research. I didn't move. And um, when I applied, I was worried about that actually, um, that I wasn't going to move. Um, and there were a number of reasons for that. The first one being that I thought I was in the best place to do the research I wanted to do. Um, it, it was the natural home for the research project that I was intending to work on. And there was really good support for me there. Um, and the other factor was that uh, I had a young family at the time and we were a, a two career family and it was just very difficult to relocate. And so for both of those reasons, I chose to stay where I was. Um, and I did really debate that and, and worry that it was going to count against me in my applications. And it was actually, I don't think it was ever a problem. So if you need further advice, the best thing to do is contact programme managers at the MRC for advice in the first instance, but also to look within your own institution at people who sit on fellowship panels um, because they are able to give you advice about the process. It doesn't matter if their specialty is a different one from your specialty. They work in a different area. A lot of the information advice is generic and so that getting their input will be really useful and helpful to you. I went to the funders, I spoke to them and asked if my ideas would be of any interest at all to them um, and whether I was eligible. And of course on the um, MRC website um, there's uh, videos um, from the panel members and the panel chair. Maura White's done some videos which are very good on in terms of what makes a good application and then uh, and then the actual interview. They've got a mock interview that's on the website which is which I usually kind of uh, Point people towards because that gives you a feeling of what you're expecting. I've certainly read um, the website of the MRC and the other research councils and the, the guidelines, um, but I think um, perhaps the most helpful was to talk to people that had recently received that same fellowship. So I approached several uh, of uh, um, recent fellows across Edinburgh um, and I've actually passed that information on myself now that I have received it. So uh, I think um, it's very common to contact um, existing fellows and ask them for advice. And I think that's very helpful.
I spoke to the director of the MRCCBU, uh, who was extremely helpful, uh, based in Cambridge. And I also uh, went to a kind of UCL um, kind of Wellcome Trust Imaging, kind of director of the Wellcome Trust Imaging Center. Uh, so again, I discussed my ideas with them. And in fact, they shared uh, uh, kind of their past uh, applications with me, which was extremely helpful. I went through how they had structured their application. But it's really the outputs and the kind of outputs that matter more than the journal. So we absolutely do not supposed to take into account where you've published. It's more the content of it. Yes, it's not going to harm your application if you've got, you know, a publication in a big journal, but it's not the be all and end all. It's really the trajectory the person's on, the drive they're showing to get there to, to that stage of their career.